Hi everyone and welcome. As you might know we just released uh, L0. It's a new autopilot for the Paparazzi UAV platform and which doesn't mean it wouldn't run with something else but uh, this is uh, our main target. The Hello is a new autopilot uh, that is based uh, on some ideas that you might know from uh, um, its predecessors, like the Lisa MX. It is um, a little bit smaller, at least uh, without the connectors. Uh, if you mount connectors, it looks like this. Um, it is a bit smaller, it has a different mounting pattern it has a few features less and a little bit of a difference in the emphasis of uh, what it does. So I would like to uh, guide you through this and uh, give you some comparisons and what the ELO is good for. So first of all the main design idea was uh, to uh, compress it into the a mounting hole pattern that is uh, popularized by a lot of the racer quad community. So as you might know there are other autopilots called uh, for example NACE 32 or uh, the CC3D from uh, OpenPilot. So these uh, boards are, have all an M3 30.5 millimeter hole pattern that they are mounted on and uh, ELO has the same hole pattern which makes it much nicer if you want to just reuse one of the standard airframes uh, that are very readily out available out there. The focus of the autopilot is a little bit different though. Uh, the main goal is to fly fully autonomously. As you might know Paparazzi is very strong in that uh, area and it can do a lot of things uh, that uh, are very unique like uh, dynamic flight plans and so on and so forth. But uh, you might know that already. This autopilot was designed in the first place to run with paparazzi. Um, so what makes it different? Uh, first of all, uh, it has a processor that uh, has enough flash to actually be able to take the full-fledged paparazzi firmware on it. Um, one thing that uh, a lot of the other autopilots uh, have is uh, much less flash. And this chip is the STM32 F415 RGT6, which means uh, it has one megabyte of flash and 192 kilobytes of RAM. Uh, this is quite a lot. Uh, usually most of the autopilots have uh, around 128 kilobytes of flash at most. Uh, some of them have 256, but that's rather rare. So the interesting thing is it is very small, it has quite a powerful processor and it has all the other sensors that uh, you would need for autonomous flight. Uh, well, besides the GPS. So you have uh, the three axis gyroscope, accelerometer and magnetometer in this chip here. Then you have an altitude barometer and um, that's all that you normally have on a board uh, of this size. Uh, there is also a connector for GPS and we also released uh, a companion GPS unit for this. So you might see it here. And it uh, has a matching hole pattern here that would mount directly over it. So you have a nice neat package together with a GPS that has a large gr ground plane. And I can show you really quick. Um, you can have a trapezoidal um, ground plane around it which uh, makes it nice and protected. So the good thing about this um, shield is uh, uh, it mitigates the amount of uh, ground reflection. So the multipath of the GPS is decreased. Uh, what does that mean? Meaning that if you change attitude of your aircraft, um, you see more satellites and uh, they are less disturbed and your GPS is more reliable. It is quite important if you fly fully autonomously and you rely basically on the GPS to do the right thing. So, uh, what next? Um, we have a few more um, I.O. on this board, so um, let's get cracking. First of all, you have uh, serial interfaces, so uh, it comes with this right angle connectors, you can solder to them and uh, you have the typical setup of uh, ground, 
plus uh, and uh, signal. So the plus rail is disconnected from the um, power supply system of the board, um, making it possible that you can run the servos at 6 volts or um, other voltages. Uh, it is very important if you have high power servos and so that uh, the autopilot can run on 5 volts and everything else, namely the actuators, can use some different voltages. So we disconnected that, so by default it is disconnected and you can uh, solder this jumper if you actually decide to connect the power rails together. Next uh, we have the uh, telemetry radio uh, connector. So on this back side it is all nicely uh, enumerated. So there you have RX, TX, 5 volts and ground uh, for the telemetry system. Then the next connector will be here. This is also a UART. Uh, this is GPS as we showed before. This connects directly to the G0 um, um, GPS receiver. Then you have an auxiliary uh, I2C uh, number two interface. Uh, you can connect to that uh, external sensors like magnetometers or barometers or whatever additional uh, special payload sensors you are using. Uh, it has I2C, it has also some other I.O., but we will talk about that later. Uh, by default, it is set up for I2C and you can use it for your external sensors. The next connector will be this one and uh, there you have uh, ground power. So this is the power supply connector. You connect a BEC to this and you connect ground, you connect 5 volts input. Uh, do not go above that. You can go a little bit above it because the voltage regulator can deal with it, but I would not recommend. Uh, you just connect 5 volts and it is uh, connected over a diode to the 5 volt rail system and um, you should be good. Um, then you have two analog uh, sensing wires, so they are connected to the internal ADC of the microcontroller. Uh, one is uh, meant to be used for voltage measurement of the battery and the last one is meant for measuring the current of the draw from the battery. These, um, unlike the Lisa M and MX, which had a built-in voltage divider, they have just a, a protection resistor in line. So it protects uh, if you in, uh, read the documentation wrong or uh, it happens sometimes, you connect like 12 volts to it. It should not burn up the chip, but I really, you shouldn't do that. So what you want to do uh, instead is um, mm, rig up something like that. I have a BEC here and this BEC just connects to the battery and it has additionally this voltage divider uh, soldered on the back. You have a 10 kilo ohm resistor connected to power and a 2.2 kilo ohm resistor connected to ground. They are then tied together and you have a sense wire that is connected to here. So uh, you just plug this guy in onto the side here and you have uh, power and voltage measurement of the battery. So again, you have this connected to the battery. To the battery plus you connect a 10 kilo ohm resistor and this 10 kilo ohms resistor is in, in series with a 2.2 kilo ohm resistor and you get your signal out. So this is a default setup. Um, the Paparazzi um, board file for the L0 is already set up with the correct uh, multiplication factors uh, to use uh, with, uh, with this. So uh, you will get the correct measurement for a three cell battery if you do this. If you use, for example, smaller batteries, you might decide to uh, have a different voltage divider so that you have a, a more accurate uh, measurement of the battery voltage. Or uh, you can decide to uh, use a bigger battery for your system, so like a 4S or 5S, 6S, whatever it is. And then you will have to come up with a different voltage divider that gives you the measurement of the full range you will have to adjust in your airframe file uh, the correct uh, multiplication factor so that um, you get the correct values in the ground station. 
as well as, of course, uh, error um, recovery when the battery goes low that the aircraft lands or comes back home or whatever it is set up as. Okay, so the next thing uh, are these connectors here. Uh, so this is also a big difference from uh, Lisa M and MX. These are JST connectors. These JST connectors are the normal connectors used for uh, Spectrum satellite receivers. So you can directly connect Spectrum satellites uh, to here and uh, you don't need to build your own harness. If you, I show you here, as you might see, and Lisa MX had this uh, PicoBlade uh, connector with six pins that you had to build a harness to connect your two satellites to. And uh, this is not necessary anymore. You can connect it directly to here. All right. Um, the last side of the board uh, has this uh, push button. And uh, if you um, press, so by default, if you uh, if you uh, just flash the default uh, example firmware for Elo, uh, if you press on this button and power on your system, the satellite uh, spectrum receivers will go into bind mode. So this is our bind button. Uh, we chose to use this side button because in many cases when you have it in an aircraft, uh, you have only access from the side because the GPS is on top or something. So we decided to go with this really tiny uh, side actuated um, button. The next one is uh, just a green LED. It lights up with power is being supplied to the system. So it is your power LED. Then you have the USB connector. Uh, and you have three indicator LEDs. Uh, one of them is the heartbeat. Um, that is you, if you know paparazzi, it's uh, quite a common one. It just beats uh, every second to show you that the system is running. Then you have the alignment LED. Again, as always, this is just the default setup. So the alignment LED um, blinks as long as the IMU is being aligned, meaning that the gyroscopes are looking for their bias and then you have the third LED indicating that the radio is uh, is good and is re being received. Uh, as you know you can always remap those in your board file. Uh, you can uh, for example put GPS on the LEDs or anything you want. So as you might have uh, seen I skipped the uh, USB. So the USB needs a little bit more explanation. This is also quite a big difference from uh, Lisa MX and Lisa M. It is connected in a way that uh, when you plug it in USB without powering the system, it will automatically set the STM32 into a bootloader mode from the factory, meaning the ST uh, company uh, has an area in the STM32 that is factory flashed, and it is being mapped into your memory so that you can um, flash it over USB. Uh, this means uh, it makes it very easy and very robust. Um, it has a, a slight th drawbacks because you, it cannot do exactly what you want, but it is very easy to use. So you plug in your USB, it will go automatically into bootloader mode, you can press upload in the paparazzi center and it will upload the firmware to the chip. Uh, what you have to be careful with is if you power the board from the uh, from the battery or over the UBAC uh, and then plug in USB, nothing will happen because uh, you the detection if the bootloader has to be started is happening at the time um, based on the power being supplied from USB. This also means that if you plug in USB, you cannot run the firmware uh, while you uh, when you power from USB. So what you have to do is, if you want to run your firmware, you have to power the board from the power supply pins. If you want to flash the firmware, you have to use the USB connector to, um, to upload the firmware. So yeah, um, I think this is most of it. Um, let me see. I don't think we have anything more. Yeah, besides uh, just repeating, you have your um, sensors and these are the IOs. 
So very important thing that um, some people were already mentioning to me is uh, that uh, you must not um, just plug in your battery into the LO, you might burn things up. Also, uh, do not connect battery directly to the voltage sensing pin because there is no voltage divider in place. You have to provide the voltage divider outside of the PCB. Anyways, otherwise, um, that is the board and uh, I hope you like it. It is uh, now already available for purchase in the one bit squared store. Uh, we have them in stock and uh, can ship out uh, almost immediately. And uh, thank you for listening. I hope this was helpful and see you next time. Bye.